Reptile. You answered. Getting hard to keep finding ways to say open door around here. And despite what Robbie says, I don't think the staff of one speaks high elven. Blood magic stuff. Cool room. Spacious. Aw, is that bed for Charlie? Yes. So... If you're planning on giving me some sort of brooding code of the stoic warrior speech, I'm immune. Just ask later, Magic. From what I just saw out there, whatever crazy ancient living weapon stuff Caretaker put you through back in the day did a real number on you. We got a lot of work to do. Work? Yeah, talking to people, making friends, basic human stuff. Or quasi-human. <laughs> you're a midnight sun now. One of us. Nico, I was just hydrobombed. I could use some rest. You and me both. Been bad dreams every night for me lately. I, uh, keep seeing Wanda. She... Never mind. I will meet you outside. Yes! I'll go nuke us some popcorn and you pick out a movie. Oh, and it may just be the two of us. The others went outside, needed to cool off. Really need to hang a fan over that forge. Or maybe crack open the casket of ancient wonders a little? So Dr. Faustus tried to drop a warehouse on you? Ugh, that guy is so lame. Talk about a prototypical follower. I know this entire situation's gotta suck for you. Not just the whole resurrected, chosen one thing. I get why facing Lilith won't be easy. I was 15 when I found out my mother was capital E evil. Was your father there for you when you found out? Uh, dad was evil too. Long story, lots of drama. Um, there was a cool dinosaur. I'll fill you in later. Look, I'm glad my mother is gone, but yeah, at times I just want to hear her voice again. Some days I'd give anything to make that happen. Makes me hate her even more. Lilith gave birth to me, but Caretaker was my true mother. Right, so your adoptive mom raised you to kill your birth mom. <laughs> You'll fit in perfectly. Uh, enough about our crappy parents. You missed out on decades of good movies. It's my solemn duty to fill this knowledge gap with the best examples I can provide. So, the first thing you need to know, the glowing briefcase is a metaphor. I won't forget it. So, what did you think of the movie? I understood more than I should. How? You've been dead for three centuries! I'm not so sure I was dead. Not exactly. I recall a deep slumber, not the void. I... I dreamt. Of what? Of everything. Much of this world is familiar to me. I know it from my dreams. Uh, that's not creepy at all. So, do you know everything? No, I... Think of it like this. I know what a car is, but I have no idea how to drive. You're up to date, but not omniscient. <laughs> then I'm guessing you don't know much about me. Just what you shared earlier. You're always free to ask. Like, what's the staff of one, or who were the runaways? I had some questions about your staff. 
Uh, sure. Uh, but first, um, the basics. The staff of one interprets words or phrases as spells, but it can only cast a spell once. No repeats. Can you tell me how the staff of one functions? It's, uh, blood magic, so my own blood is required to summon it. You wouldn't believe how many adhesive bandages I go through each year. What about the words you speak? They come true. Uh, kind of. And not always the way I expect. It's like making a wish, but you can never make the same wish again. I had some questions about your old team. The Runaways? Sure thing. Who was on the team? At first, uh, Chase with his mad science gear, Molly, our pint-sized powerhouse, Carolina, the solar-powered sweetheart. Gert had a telepathic link to Old Lace, a genetically engineered Deinonychus from the 87th century. I handled the blood magic, though I didn't understand it much. And Alex? Uh, well, we don't talk about Alex. Where are your friends now? Molly attends Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Carolina left Earth to marry alien nobility. Gert... She, uh... She didn't make it. After Gert passed, uh, Chase and I had a falling out. The last I heard, he and Old Lace are living at his family home in L.A. As for Alex, uh... He chose his side, and it wasn't ours. He died with our parents. I should get going. Uh, good, good timing. Um, looks like Caretaker wants to speak with you, and wow, I should get to bed. Time flies when you're hanging out. I'm glad to see you're using your free time productively. Lilith is no less aggressive now than she was 300 years ago. If anything, she's become even more brazen with age. Hopefully, it's just desperation on her part. Looks like you're finding your way around. Maybe making some new friends. I was planning on getting some rest, but... Things are moving at a frantic pace. For all we know, I'll be landing a jet on the roof with Mr. Stark this afternoon. <sighs> Not quite like it was in the good old days. I remember many sleepless nights and blood-soaked days. Always on the hunt. I'll give you that. But there were times back then I wouldn't trade for anything. With both you and... Agatha? Where is Agatha? I am sorry. I should have had this talk with you much sooner. But you should know... Agatha... She's no longer with us. What? That is impossible. She was so... Fierce. Indomitable. Or maybe just kind to a fault. Agatha's power... How could she be... Gone. She put her trust in the wrong person. Agatha died in an accident caused by her protege, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. The Midnight Sun's latest recruit, a powerful spellcaster in her own right. Perhaps the most powerful Agatha and I had ever seen. Wanda's abilities were growing. Too quickly for my liking. Agatha was determined to help her control them. I tried to caution her, but she would not listen. There was an incident. An accident, I'm sure, but... Agatha was killed. Yes, incinerated in an instant. Not even Ash to remember her by. The others were heartbroken, as was I. But I also saw the danger. The threat, if Wanda's powers were left unchecked. So I did what needed to be done. I sent Wanda away, to the Sanctum Sanctorum, to study under Doctor Strange. 
I know the others still harbor a great deal of resentment towards me for it. Was Wanda so different from me as a child? Was it that easy to send her away? I didn't have a choice. Wanda's powers were beyond even her own control. And this time I had no Agatha to help me, as I had with you. I thought she would be safe with Strange. On that part, at least, I was clearly mistaken. Ah, <sighs> Wanda. Agatha. It seems we've lost them both now. I conjured a small shrine to Agatha's memory on the grounds, hoping to find some solace, a way to move forward. You should pay your respects. Maybe you'll find what I couldn't. Good night, Hunter. did have the most remarkable eyes, Hunter. Just like your mother's. Maybe that's why you're the first. The first? To commune with the spirits, of course. <laughs> I is this a trick of some kind? Because I am not amused. No, it's no trick, dear. You're just the first to see me. By now you've heard I had a bit of trouble with my corporeal body. I actually find it quite liberating. You are dead. Always straight to the heart of things. That's my hunter. You seem strangely at ease about this whole thing. After a thousand years of living, you learn to take things in stride. Even death. And what have you been doing all this time? Meet me by the cave just over there. You know the one. The Bloodgate? Caretaker always told me to stay away from that place. I think we can safely lift the veil on a few more of our secrets. What's the worst that can happen? This looking portal is known as a blood gate, and you're the only one among us who can pass through it. Blood gate? Caretaker's handiwork? Yes, Sarah got a little overprotective after the accident with Wanda. It's become something of a habit for her. I have noticed that. What lies beyond is meant for you, as much as it ever was for her. Assuming you're up to the challenge, that is. You know I am. I do. 
but it's always polite to ask. That is something. There was a time when the blood stood within these celestial halls to prove their worth. This particular arena belongs to a goddess who often favored Sarah, Ashtor. Sarah? Caretaker was here? Nothing ever comes easy, dear. The Elder Gods felt their descendants needed to earn their blessings, which is why they created these trials to begin with. <sighs> trials? I should have known. This entire realm exists for that purpose. Trial by combat, with no chance of outside interference. And this is my challenge? Yes, but I may have found a loophole they never considered. Why don't you try summoning your four-legged friend? <laughs> The old gods are responsible for a great many creations, including your faithful companion. I think even they tend to forget that. Good luck, dear. As the goddess of balance and order, Ashtor was sometimes called the giver of justice. You can expect a fair fight, or at least her idea of one. Too weak for this fight. They cannot possibly match your strength. Abandons you. Now that was something. Compared to our girl, these hellhounds are nothing but mindless beasts. Don't hesitate to strike. They certainly won't. You had your chance. Feel my call. Some for the rest of us. I saw a move like that once, centuries ago. I am impressed. Good girl, Charlie. Oh, and you too, Hunter. You finish this trial, but don't worry. The other gods are waiting.
have to be wary of this place. But it's your birthright, and I think after everything you've been through, you can handle it now. The two of you, as well as your mother, are the last of your kind, a blood. Your lineage follows an unbroken line to the old gods themselves. And if you call upon them, you might just find they're actually listening. They won't work miracles for you, but their blessings can be quite useful in the right circumstance. Why don't you ask the goddess Ashtor for her aid in dealing with that barrier over there? Blessings of the Goddess. After all this time, it's still just as beautiful as the first time I laid eyes on it. It's hard to believe Lilith and Caretaker brought this place all the way from Transia. Of course, it was no coincidence that they wound up so close to Salem. This area is particularly attuned to the forces of magic. That's why the Elder God's influence was so prevalent here. And why our sanctuary here has remained all but impregnable over the centuries. <laughs> and now I'm rambling on like an old Sorcerer Supreme. Why don't you come see me in the library tomorrow night? Oh, and... Let's keep this just between the two of us for now. I'm afraid Sarah... Caretaker isn't ready to see me yet. Good night, Hunter. We'll see if I can find you a treat later. Ahem. <coughs> um, is this thing on? Uh, Hunter, please come to the forge at your earliest convenience. Again, that's Hunter to the forge. Thank you. Uh, strange out. We still have so many more movies to show you, like, like 70s grindhouse flicks. It's super easy to hang out with you, Hunter. Hunter, just in time. His royal weirdness and I were deciding what to do with that nasty little Hydra gift box you found. Ah, yes. The spooky crate. The very one. Though it is far from any mere container, I assure you. I am detecting powerful emanations from inside. If this is a sign of what Hydra is after, I fear we are all in grave danger. 
My offer still stands. I could fly the thing up and nuke it in orbit. Only way to be sure. Or we could open it, Tony. And perhaps use the mystical energies I sense inside to our advantage? Yeah, I heard a we in there. <laughs> Green goopy gamma serums are one thing. I'm not opening boxes full of mummy curses. You don't have to. Hunter, if you'll allow me. Your second funeral, boss. If Hydra is now working to acquire mystical antiquities, then our situation is very dire indeed. We need to find a way to gain the upper hand. And you think you can do it with whatever is in the container? Tony has one of the greatest scientific minds that I've ever seen. I, of course, have an unparalleled understanding of the mystic arts. I have no doubt that we can find a way to research whatever we find in there and have it work in our favor. I just wonder what it could be. I would be highly suspicious of anything that Hydra has had in its possession. My advice would be to do what Tony says. Destroy whatever is in there immediately. With... All due respect, Hunter, that would be short-sighted and foolish. For one thing, it's very, very hard to dispose of magical items. The repercussions are sometimes... unexpected. Besides, I need all the magical items I can get. And why is that? Right now, with the sanctum out of my reach, I'm fighting with one hand tied behind my back. It, metaphorically, that is. If I can find items to research, I can give the Midnight Suns every possible advantage over Lilith and her disciples. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Me too, Hunter. Now, all this talk is going nowhere unless we can get this container open and study what's inside. Step up to the anvil, Hunter. It doesn't bite. Are there any curses I should be aware of? Hosts of Hoggoth. I, I can hardly believe it. What? Is it worse than you expected? No, it's totally unexpected. It's the Eternity Dagger. This was in a place of honor in my bedchamber in the Sanctum for years. The Sanctum Sanctorum is no common domicile to be burglared. These barbarians have no idea what they possessed. Or perhaps they did. Maybe these artifacts are exactly what Faustus and my mother were after to begin with. A distressing thought. If they had my dagger, then who knows what others of my priceless possessions have passed through their greedy fingers. The cube of nothingness. The tear of Prophia, and most worrisome of all. Your toothbrush? You, uh, had a little coffee thing going on this morning with your breath? Oh, Tony. Sorry. Doc's right, Hunter. I drank three glasses of holy water just to walk through the Sanctum's front door. The place is like a doomsday vault for all sorts of supernatural nastiness. We need to put a lid on this mess. Pronto. I believe Carol is already working on it. At last. Now that this artifact has been returned to its proper owner, we shall see if we can make use of the mystic forces contained within. These were relatively common at one point in history. I'm always in a few at once, so no time is ever wasted. So, how's the whole saving the world thing going? No problem. You're welcome, Hunter. I'm pretty sure Charlie left a steaming coil in the hallway. Third state of matter, indeed.
Until next time. Hunter, uh, got a sec to spare? You moving to the forge, Hunter? You've been here more in the past few days than I have since... ever. The forge is pretty badass, but the creature trapped inside riles up my own inner demon. Um, speaking of, there's something you should know about me. You are bonded with the spirit of vengeance? Damn, you're good! How could you tell? You are not the first spirit of vengeance to join the Midnight Suns. I fought beside another just a few days... <clears throat> three centuries ago. Oh man, um, sometimes when I have crap to work through, I like to get my blood pumping. Why don't we hit the yard for a sparring session? I know Sparky's excited to meet you. Sparky? That's what I call my spirit of vengeance. His real name is something you'd see written on a symbol, but with like 12 apostrophes. Also, he's not allowed inside after the incident with caretaker Sumerian Sofa. He allows you to call him Sparky? Well, yeah. He knows it's coming from a good place. He's really impressive, Hunter. I can't wait for the two of you to meet. Okay, let's do this. I'll get Blade to set things up. Won't take a minute. I will head to the yard. Um, when you and Sparky trade places, what does he look like? He's the guy with the flaming metal skull and hellfire chains. Kinda hard to miss. Hunter, ready to get your burn on? I'm talking training with Ghost Rider. Spirits of vengeance train the hardest. The time for punishment is here. <laughs> like playing with fire. Maybe you should be the Time's wasting, Hunter. Hunter, report to the war room. We've got a mission. See you around. You called for me, Captain? Keep telling ya, Carol works too, but yeah, I did. Now that Tony's finally starting to get a handle on his gremlin problem, I've been able to put Central to good use. Got a lead on some particularly gnarly Hydra operations happening in the city, but we need to move fast if we want to intercept them in time. Then let us get going. My thoughts exactly. There's just one problem, though. We seem to have lost our gatekeeper, Magic. Lost? Well, I updated her on the mission. She said something I can only assume to be a prolific swear word in Russian and disappeared. Literally. And with no magic... There is no passage to New York. Or anywhere, for that matter. Now you see my problem.
Do not worry, Captain. I will locate and alert her of the team's needs. There's that can-do, get-it-done, old-timey, prophesied savior of humanity attitude I was hoping to see today. Still, you better hurry. Not sure how long Hydra will remain in their current position. Then I shall make haste. Yes, you hasten as much as you can, Hunter.